Hello. I'm just out here tinkering. I've got all the grinding arbors done that I needed except for this one here. I was going to use this wheel here, but I discovered, I don't know if you can see it, all the little diamonds in it. It's a diamond dressing wheel for dressing diamond wheels for a surface grinder. So that's not a grinding wheel. Good thing I got it for cheap. So instead of that, I'm just going to make something different. I'll worry about that in a few. But I got a new wheel for Christmas. It's a pink 60 grit. Might be an 80, but it's pretty coarse. This is an aluminum oxide. I made no new arbor for that one. Made one for this one. I took the diamond wheel off of this since I don't really need two grinders now. And that big wheel, I turned the shaft down on the arbor for it to fit this wheel and put it on my hand grinder. Put the big wheel on it because my other one was worn out. Okay. I did cut a keyway in this. I got video of it. I'll put it up here. Okay, I just set this up. I got two clamps holding it down. It kept wanting to push this way slightly over time, so I put a lead block in front of here so it doesn't push. Just take a tenth out pass at a time to feed in. I got a Woodruff key cutter. It's the only one I have because the other fly cutter kept coming out. This shaft's a lot harder than that fly cutter could handle. I think my cutter was a little dull, but I'll be able to resharpen it soon enough. Keyway looks good. Just got a burr, that's probably why it's not one to go in. It's wanting to start. So I think as soon as I get rid of the burrs, it should slide in. And I did make a belt for this J belt. It's like a mini serpentine belt. And the first groove, the tool bit wasn't put in all the way tight. And when I tried feeding in it, it went a little more meat than I wanted. But it does fit well. But the only thing is, after all that, the belt is too short. I can't use it. So I ended up picking up a 3L belt and we'll use that one. We'll use the 3L belt. But because it's a thicker belt, I gotta make a larger pulleys for the motor and the spindle. So I got a 4 inch pulley blank on on hold in the casting shed. I'll show you some of that video real quick.
Okay, I just set the indicator stand down and have the indicator up against here. I gotta feed over 92 thousandths for each tooth and I got a 40 degree high-speed steel cutter in one of the Armstrong tool holders because this is a J belt so that's the dimensions each step over is 92 thousandths it's like a mini serpentine belt but it's I got it off a washing machine That's good and it has a nice, good, strong grip. So I think, I think that's pretty good. I have a little bit of a rolled over burr right here, so it's, yeah. And this first tooth is a little thin. Looks good. Now I think we can bore it out and call this one done. quarter inch fine thread the shaft on the motor only has a flat on it so I just put a set screw on it only just a half inch shaft also I know there's aluminum little sparkles everywhere here I I've had this die grinder forever it's just a clone one and I reamed the call it out because it only fit one grinding wheel and it was junk I think it was a six millimeter shaft so I just reamed it out to a quarter inch stuck it in an R8 collet and reamed it now I can use all my tooling but I want to make an eighth inch one and another quarter inch one so I've got spring steel and we'll put the make a collet chuck for this piece then I can use the same collets between the die grinder and tool and cutter grinder because this will be able to hold the die grinder stones, this quarter inch shank and eighth inch ones on the Dremel also since my hand and arm was messed up or hurting real bad I sat down and was working on my 3D printer a little bit I made a new 3D printer nozzle I got a picture here and I got some video of it running I just rebuilt this hot end nozzle it's just a piece of quarter inch brass bolt that I found 
turned the head off of it, drilled the end for 25 thousandths or 0 0.6 millimeters, then drilled a 564th hole almost all the way to the tip, probably within a 16th or so, and then drilled to the very top of where that aluminum block is for the heater block for 8th inch, put a PTFE liner in it for for the filament to slide in easy. Acts as a thermal brake a little bit. Works pretty good now. I actually made this thing a few years ago. The motors are from inkjet printers. There's four of them. No, five of them. The threaded rod and stuff, the smooth rod came from the hardware store. Those are from inkjet printers. The belts and stuff are from inkjet printers. This belt here is from a flatbed scanner. The electronics I custom made myself. Etched the board and everything and wired it up. But the old thing's up and running again. Works pretty good. The thing is that the bearings on the bottom are worn out. They're just 3D printed and plastic ones. There's just a little bit of slop, so as the table's moving back and forth, it's skewing the print. It's doing this. moving back and forth and it causes the print to go skewed a little bit off so I gotta make new bearings for that that's on the list of things to do but I'm out of filament so I'm not in any rush right now okay, I've got these two flasks this one is just the some sand that's packed in and I ran a tube through it, down into it, about that deep, so I don't go too close to the bottom again and set this piece on fire. It's too hard to replace those pieces. <laughs> that one's ready to be poured. This will be the brass round stock, which I've got all these bits and pieces of brass here. I've got this whole can here full of brass bits. So that should give me enough to make the cotter pins and stuff that I need. Here's a little furnace. I got that mold there already, which is the housing or the body of the grinding head. I'll show that in a second. And this one here is just the four inch pulley blank and the backstop. It's just a split pattern. I like doing this, it's just a hub here. Then I have some Schedule 20 PVC, which is a nice fit right over it. So when I ram it up, the sprue actually acts as a as part of the shaft for the pulleys. My flask that has the big one in. I had this pattern and I only have one side of it because I ran out of plastic. So what I did, my flask that I used for that has pins in the side, just quarter inch pins. I transferred the holes through for the pins into this piece here. Tacks as a follower. Since the holes are symmetrical there's three holes here, or three pins, and they're symmetrical to the surface, or to the center line. So I can set this side up here, ram this up, undo the mold, knock it out, or 
just remove this part here, put it back together the same exact way. Put this one on here, ram up the bottom, remove the follower board, and you got both halves. My printer, the bearings are worn out in the Y axis, so the alignment is just a little bit off, so it skewed it just a little bit. So the print is going to be a little bit off when it's cast, but I have so much machining allowance on this thing to counteract shrinkage and stuff that I don't really have to worry about it because all of that misalignment is going to get machined off anyways. So those molds are made up. I still have one more to do and that is that is the wheel guard which is probably the last part that will go on this tool and cutter grinder. So I'm not in a rush to get that done right now. So yeah. I was planning on modifying it putting a little boss right here anyways to, for a set screw. A little boss, but mm. yeah I don't have enough sand to pour this pattern right now. The flask takes way too much sand for this part. It's the only one that I have that's tall enough. So as soon as these three are poured I'll ram this up and get ready to pour that one off. I'm just it's you can probably hear the rain or the water in the background running off of everything. The it it rains every time it gets warm out here so during winter. So I just made up the molds. They're sitting here Usually you can leave the green sand molds for about a week before they start degrading. And it looks like Monday, which is two days from now, will start warming up a little bit, or it'll get mostly sunny out all day. So I may pour that, but it'll be too cold to make up any molds. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, talking about casting stuff, I got a new clay graphite crucible for from a friend, a number one crucible, and another one says I need to do iron. Keeps telling me I need to do iron. So he sent me one too. That's an A10 crucible. I think he said it holds 45 pounds of iron, so it's a Super Salamander brand, so it's a very good brand. Morgan Crucibles. So, thank you guys for that. I also got myself a leaf blower. Found it at a thrift store. It's one of those you plug in. It's just a corded one. But it's fully adjustable for the speed and it goes down to pretty much nothing it was real cheap but this will work for a blower for when I'm doing casting because my little blower that I have the cage fan that rattles it doesn't give enough air to burn neutral with some of the fuels that I run hence why I get the little tiny bit of porosity in the aluminum castings but now I can run diesel in the thing and have enough air for diesel to melt cast iron. Now I got the crucible blower and all that's left to do is just make the tongs and pouring shank. And I'll start pouring some straight edges and stuff or some iron castings at least. 
I also got another sticker, Anthony Brown's channel, Ragdale Creek Workshop. He's another tinkerer like me. He's always getting into something. But if you aren't sure who this guy is, look on almost any machining video for the last year or so. There's a guy that'll be there going for, says, watching from Alabama. Nothing else. That's Anthony. He has some pretty cool stuff on his channel. It's definitely worth a watch. I also got a new power hacksaw blade. It's a 14 TPI. It's a Starrett Red Stripe. I never really knew how good the Red Stripe blades were until a friend of mine sent me some for a hacksaw. I started using those and I'm still on my first blade and it's been almost a month now of using it almost non-stop so I'm sold and the blade's still sharp as could be I looked up the blade on my power hacksaw and found which type it was and the last ones they were made were in the 1950s so it's at least 70 years old or at least 60 years old now so it was time to replace it. I've sharpened it to the point that there's not much left on it for teeth. So, got a new blade. I'll put that on sometime soon. Also got one last one here. A good friend of mine, a very good friend, sent me this. As you can tell, by the fingerprints all over them, they've gotten used quite a bit. They're precision ground flat stones from Stephen Lang. So I've used them quite a bit and they've they definitely work good. But Yeah, I've used them a few times already when I was working on the shaft and stuff here trying to get rid of the burrs on the shaft for the tool cutter grinder and it works really well for getting rid of all the burrs and all the crap as you can tell they get they've gotten used quite a few times from all the fingerprints and everything else on them and on the box put those away so nothing happens to them so thank you very much for all this stuff I got, since I pretty much got all this done, I gotta make the arm still, which you've seen that. But what I'm gonna do, since I'm waiting on castings, I'm just going to, I got this piece of cardboard here to get the height where I want it. This is a good height for me. It is 14 inches, I believe. 14 or 16 inches. But what I'm going to do is, I have this 3 inch piece of pipe that I made the cylinder squares out of. These ones, a while back, to make the 1, 2, 3 blocks. I'm just going to cut it to all the bad parts out, and I'm going to just take a skim pass off the outside, true it up, get it ready for the housing for the grinding head. Okay, this is just a bit of an update, just showing what's been going on and all of that. We've got these all done up. They look pretty good, actually. Just got to make the, the the wrench form or the socket, and then yeah, right, I'm gonna call it. Thanks for watching. I'll see ya.
Also, to all those guys that I see putting borax on the crucibles, don't do that. Some idiot moron company decided to send instructions with their cru clay graphite crucibles to put borax on it. All it does is it eats the crucible itself. It fluxes the clay in it and it will actually eat the crucible from the outside in or the inside out depending on where you put the borax. It's just they discovered if you destroy your crucible you can, they can sell you another one a lot faster. All you have to do is heat the thing up in an oven just heat it up with with the oven itself to 400 or 450 for an hour then take it out, put it in the furnace, start up the furnace that is all you have to do get it up to red hot and you can put your metal in it from then on let it cool down with the furnace and start it up with the furnace that's the only instructions you need for a clay graphite crucible otherwise you will just wreck them